So the third test has cached, and if I press play, it's a lot better. Again, you still get some little crash throughs here and there, but uh, we could try one more test, or I could just live with that for now. Uh, I'm sure that when the actual motion capture is applied to the character, once the uh, character has animation keyframes applied, we're probably going to have to tune it a little bit more. So this is really just an initial preliminary test. So I think that's successful. The real trick now involves getting the character from this pose into the first pose of animation. And to kind of set this up, I'm going to actually turn the cloth off just so we don't deal with any simulation. And I'm also going to delete the you know, cache file from here. I don't want to actually read from the cache right now. So I'll turn the cloth off, which means I can drag freely on the timeline, and I'll, I'll minimize. So this bind pose is important because it defines the initial state of the cloth. If you look under the state menu, we can actually set, set the particle or the cloth's initial state. I keep mentioning the word particle because really that's all cloth is. It's a bunch of particles held together by springs uh, with bend and shearing between them. Uh, we can set the initial state, but we actually need to allow the particle time to get into that first pose of whatever animation we use. So that's the actual challenge. And I find that the best way to do this is to use the animation mixer. I already have a mixer clip for my bind pose. If I actually open up the Explorer and switch to objects only mode, uh, oops, I guess I need the all animatable parameters. I should open up the mixer sources animation folder. And I do have my rest pose right here. If I actually just test it out, I can apply it to the character. And this is indeed the bind pose. If I also store the first frame of animation as a mixer clip, I can then blend between the rest pose and the first frame of the uh, uh, of the motion capture or keyframe data, and then blend between a rest pose of that into the actual animation. Again, there's a number of ways we could do this, but um, another way we could actually do it too is to actually use the hold keyframe option in the uh, in the animation mixer for whatever clip we use. The process I'm going to actually go through now involves actually getting motion capture in. That's the kind of keyframe data I'm going to provide for this, uh, this cloth test. I need to get motion capture in and load it as a mixer clip. So I don't really need the clothing geo right now. I'm going to hide it. We're just going to deal with naked old uh, Malkor there. Uh, I'm going to select the character and I'm going to go in and uh, load a motion onto my rig. I need to tag the rig first though, and if you remember back in the motor set of tutorials, uh, if we tag the rig we can load in our preset template, the foot roll template. So, and we'll just populate that up and just verify that everything's good in there. We have our extra parts. Yes, everything looks good. And from there I can load in a motion. Now remember that in 7 we have uh, the load motion option and provided for us in the samples folder a whole bunch of BVH files that have been converted to the motor format. So I guess what I can do is just choose any uh, kind of motion. Um, let's try something interesting here. Let's try uh, I don't know, something that actually tests the character and the flexibility of the, um, of the cloth. So cheering is always a good one because it looks like there's a lot of uh, a lot of arm motion there, and that's going to be probably uh, the most problematic pose to strike with our cloth. So if I load that on, I'll apply that at the first frame, and this is our motion here. So if I actually just play that back, let's see how it looks. Actually, let me extend this a little bit. I just want to see how long this uh, actual clip is. Okay, it's about 298 frames. All right, I'm going to turn that into uh, a mixer file. So I'll actually just hide my 3D geometry here and grab my character, all the controls. I've got 82 of them, and from that I'm going to store an action. Actually, before I store the action, I need to plot out the motor file. So I'll plot out the motor file to a series of keyframes. Um, I can 
switch the interval size to maybe around five or six frames. So I'm keying every fifth frame, and I'll preserve uh, the source keys as much as possible. I want to also key the peak, valley, and, and main points, the main extreme points of the curves. So we'll just step through as motor calculates the plotting to keyframes. And from those keyframes, we'll look at exporting as a mixer clip. Once in the mixer, we'll be able to blend between those two clips. I usually find that blending between the rest pose and the first frame of the motor animation uh, you should do that usually over between 50 or 60 frames. I find that works out pretty well. You can also put the uh, the start frame back in the negative frames as well too, which will allow you to be live on frame one. Usually the way I work though is everything ends up being driven back through the mixer and I can do all my timing offsets directly in the mixer. So a lot of my initial useful animation with cloth, ha cloth happens on later frames and through a combination of point cache uh, shape cache, um, I'm able to just control where I want effects to take place. Alright, so this is done. I've got a lot of keyframes on my timeline here now from those keyframes. Uh, I've got all 82 objects that matter selected and I'll store the animated parameters as a series of function curves mixer clip. So we've got uh, 90 items here and we'll store that action. I'll call this one uh, stand and cheer. I'll remove the original animation from the character so we're left with basically a static pose here. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to pop the character back into the rest pose, select the rest pose and apply the action. And what I want to do now is create a transition from the rest pose into the stand and cheer pose.